We are living in a day and an age where we cannot afford not to know what our calling is. We cannot afford not to know what God's plan is for us as individuals here on this earth. Our survival depends on it. I know that sounds dramatic, but it's true. But also your fulfillment in life. Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. But if there is one question that I get again and again and again, it's how do I know my calling? And yes, a prophet can come and prophesy it over you, but there are more things involved than knowing your calling and successfully stepping into it. And that is what I'm going to talk about today. This is a very practical video. And so so that's why it is so important for you to stay tuned. My name is Arlene Westerhoff and welcome to my weekly word of prophetic encouragement. You know, I've been doing these weekly word videos now for about a year and a half, and I'm really just enjoying every time I travel that I meet people who said, you know, I watch you, I follow you on YouTube and your videos, you know, they have encouraged me. They've helped me. They've got me out of a place where I'm not stuck anymore and just going around in circles, not knowing what to do, but I'm advancing in my calling. And when I hear those kind of testimonies, they delight my heart. And so that's what these weekly words of prophetic encouragement videos are meant to do. I'm an author. I'm a prophet. I'm an international speaker. I'm also a pastor. And one of my passions in life is that I want to help you to connect fully to the calling of God on your life. And so that is what we will be talking about today. Before I start, however, if you have not yet already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please take a moment and just do that. And when you subscribe, don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you can be notified every time I release a new weekly word of prophetic encouragement. Now, today we're talking about calling. Knowing what to do, but equally important is also knowing what not to do. What exactly are you called for? And I'm going to take a look at calling from the book of Esther today, but I'm going to do it in a bit of a different way than you've heard before. Now, many of us, we know the story of Queen Esther. She was an orphan and she was raised by Mordecai, a family member. And so that is how she became a woman. Interestingly enough, without Mordecai, there would have been no story about Esther. I'm going to repeat that. Without Mordecai, there wouldn't have been a story about Esther. And what I'm trying to say here is the following, is in walking in our calling, we cannot do it alone. In identifying what our calling is, but in walking in it, we cannot do it alone. Mordecai raised Esther and he raised her with a certain set of values. And those values are what got Esther promoted and actually made her queen and gave her favor with both God and men. Now we start the story as follows. Queen Vashti disobeyed an order from the king. And so as a result, she was deposed and she was sent away. And the king decided after a while, when his anger cooled down with Vashti, I need to replace her. I need to find myself a new queen. And so he sent envoys throughout the entire empire looking for the most beautiful women they could find. And one of those women was Esther. And in Esther chapter two, it talks about the fact that Esther was taken into the king's palace, into the care of the custodian of the women. And it says there that the young woman pleased the custodian and she obtained his favor. favor. And so he readily gave her beauty preparations in addition to her allowance. And then he gave her also seven choice maid servants. Now this is interesting. First of all, you can see the hand of God on Esther. 
Esther could have sat down and said, you know what, I'm an orphan and God doesn't care about any, me anymore. Where was God when these things happened? But she didn't do that. She raised herself up and she became a beautiful young woman with an amazing set of values. And she also honored the Lord in her heart. Her cousin Mordecai raised her to honor him in her heart, the Lord that is. And so as a result, she obtained favor with both God and men. And so Esther is now taken into the king's palace. And I'm sure that she didn't know eventually what God would use her to do. But this was a door that opened for her and Mordecai encouraged her to go in through that door. Anyway, Esther obtained favor. And when it was time for Esther to go into the king, there's something that's very significant that happens here. When it was time for her to go into the king, she listened to what the custodian of the women advised her to take with her. And she took nothing more, nothing less than what this person told her to take with her. And it says afterwards that when she had spent the night with the king, that the king loved Esther more than all of the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all of the virgins, the other ones, and he made her queen. Now, for me, this is significant. Many of us are told, even in the Christian world, you know, if you want to succeed, if you want to connect with God's calling on your life, you've got to have an idea, you've got to have a vision, you've got to, you know, be able to articulate it, and you shouldn't copy anybody. You need to just break out and do it in a totally new way. One of the things I am, in addition to a prophet, is I'm also a pastor. And one of the things that I have come to appreciate are those who, when we open the doors for them, and we do that a lot with the people in our apostolic house, that is why we are here, to help people engage with their callings. But one of the things that's extremely appealing to me and to my husband is that when we open the doors of opportunity for people, the people actually turn around and they start to talk about, you know, what was the previous vision? Not so they can copy it, but so that they can internalize it, so that they can speak out, you know, just, hey, uh, what was good about this? So that they show that they appreciate that before they start in on a totally new way. Someone who is willing to do that, someone who's willing to listen to instruction, that is someone who we're going to stand beside and help. And that was the same with Esther and with the custodian of the women. He helped her and because of her spirit, her wise spirit, God was able to pour out his blessing upon Esther. All through the story, as we read now, there's something that has always fascinated me. And that is that several times, Esther 2 verse 10, for example, Esther had not revealed her people or family for Mordecai had charged her not to reveal it. And then later on in Esther 2 verse 19, or sorry, verse 20, now Esther had not revealed her family and her people just as Mordecai had charged her just as Mordecai had told her to do that, not to reveal that she was a Jewess and not to reveal her family. I don't know why Mordecai said that to her. Perhaps it was because he knew that in the empire, people were not friendly towards Jews. However, Esther obeyed him. It's interesting that obedience is also something that really set Esther apart from the rest. That is not something that we talk about today. Esther was an adult already. She knew her own mind. She didn't have to obey Mordecai, but she also recognized, and that set Esther apart from the rest. She recognized the wisdom 
of Mordecai. And she also recognized that God had given her Mordecai to, play, to stand by her and to play a significant role in her life. And so she recognized and acknowledged spiritual authority. In this case, Mordecai was a spiritual authority in her life. And so things continued. One day, Mordecai was sitting at the gate because he came to the palace every day, we read, you know, to check up on how things were going with Esther. And one day, he indeed heard two of the king's eunuchs who were unhappy with the king making a plan to actually assassinate the king. And so he told Esther, and Esther told the king, and when it was checked out, it was found that indeed this was the case, and those two were hanged. And so that was written down in the annals, the books of the king and those who had provided a service for the king or done him good. And now we get to the part of the story where Mordecai, you know, tells Esther Haman's plan. And Esther says, what can I do about it? Interestingly enough, I do not think that Esther knew what the plan of God was for her life until that moment. And when she discovered the plan of God for her life, it was shocking. It was something that filled her with dread. Why? Because Mordecai told Esther about the plan and he said to her, perhaps it is for this. Who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. That's what Mordecai said to Esther. And he said to her, if you do not go, God will raise up deliverance from his people because there were promises of God spoken out over the people of God. He'll raise them up from another area, but, and you will not survive. But perhaps, just perhaps, you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And I think it was at that moment that Esther knew what she needed to do. And so she finally said, you know, to Mordecai, get the people, the Jews who are present in Sushan to fast and to pray with me and not to eat or to drink anything for three days. And then she says, I will go to the king. And if I die, I die. Because indeed in those days, the king, if you were uninvited, into his presence, you would be in executed immediately if he did not stretch out his scepter, which was a sign that he accepted your presence in his royal courts. And so that was what happened. And Esther went before the king and he extended his scepter to her. Now, I'm not going to spend time on the rest of the story. We know the story. You know, it was just Esther displayed wisdom each time she displayed wisdom because she had listened to Mordecai, the wise counselor who God had placed in her life. If you just type in, I need wise counselors, please, in the chat now, because we all do. That's so important. So type it in as a proclamation for yourself also. Not only I need wise counselors, but the second thing I'm going to ask you to type into the chat is I choose to allow myself to be counseled by those who are wise. I'm going to repeat that. I choose to allow myself to be counseled by those who are wise. And at the right time, Esther was able to reveal her identity to the king and Haman was hanged. Why am I talking about this story? Because as I've been praying, I realize once again that if there had not been a Mordecai, there would not have been and Esther. Esther did not get to the position that she achieved on her own. Her family member, her uncle raised her and he fed her and he made sure that she grew up with everything that she needed to become a beautiful young woman with a great character who was also discerning enough to listen to wise counsel. And when her day and her moment came, she was positioned and able to act to see God save his people. But you know what? Esther's calling, it was for that moment, it was for that time. 
But Esther's calling was something that unfolded progressively. In one of my previous videos, I've said that the calling of God is not something that, boom, you know, just comes upon you at a moment always, but it starts way before you actually get there. Esther, a woman of God, a woman with a beautiful spirit inside and out, meaning, you know, it was just God could bless her. Esther, a humble woman who was not too proud to follow wise counsel. And as a result, God blessed her and put his favor on her life. And we know the rest of the story. That is why many say, you know, Esther's life is an inspiration to them. But I realize too, that for some of us, you know, it's just Esther needed to recognize her moment of calling. And for many of us, we will need to recognize that moment of calling. I spoke last week about the fact that Jesus Christ, he knew that that was what he had come for. He knew that he had come to die on the cross. I don't know whether that kind of gradually developed in him or that in one of his conversations with God, his father, and one of his encounters with God, his father, that that was told to him. But when he had to actually go to the cross in the garden of Gethsemane, he was afraid. He said, Lord, you know, if it's possible, father, cause this cup to pass me by. But if not, not my will, but yours be done. That's the kind of heart attitude that it doesn't matter where you are in your journey in life. It doesn't even matter where you are geographically. With this kind of heart attitude, God will surely start to move you and position you into the calling that he has for you. This is meant to be a hopeful word today. The fact that as we position our hearts rightly before the Lord, as we display good character and humility, God will surely cause his grace and his favor to come upon us. And that is when actually you'll break through and get into the places where you need to be so that God can use you mightily. Now, as I come to you today, you know, I'm not talking theory. This week, you know, it's just I'll be presenting on a transformational model for a nation that we're busy with, you know, from my economic center that I'm a director of. And it's an enormous honor to be able to present that. But I've also been asked now to present something from the main stage with 1,200 people watching. And I'm realizing that God puts us into situations so that we can represent him. It is a secular crowd. And so I'm praying for the wisdom of God, the multifaceted wisdom of God for solutions that the world cannot think of to be upon not only me this week, but also upon you. Thank you for watching this weekly word of prophetic encouragement. I hope that you've gotten something from it. Actually, I expect that you have, but what you do know now is with the right heart attitude, and Esther displayed that, a person of humility, a person of discernment to know who were the wise counselors who God had placed in her life, and a person of courage that when the moment came, she was able to act. She was the one who broke through in her calling and all of the processes that being orphaned, being, you know, going through the grief of that, being raised in her uncle Mordecai's house contributed to what God was able to do with her afterwards. I just bless you now in Jesus name to know and to be able to see, especially this week, the wise counselors who God has placed around you. Every single one of us will have people around us who God has placed in our lives. It might be a grandmother, it might be a parent, it might be a friend, it might be a pastor, or it might be someone completely different, a mentor that you have at work. But I play and I speak it out now, 
clarity to recognize the wise counselors God gives you so that you are able to break through in your calling in this season. In Jesus' name, amen.